All right, welcome to Video Store Veterans. My name is Mark. Uh, Keegan. And this is our little podcast that we just started about uh, two dudes worked in a video store talking about movies. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, I thought we'd start off by talking about um, what we've been watching lately. Uh, so what was like the latest thing you've been watching? Uh, well, the latest thing I saw was uh, It Follows actually oh yeah yeah um i had heard a lot about it over the past well ever since it was released actually i had a lot of people tell me it was the greatest horror movie they've seen in the past few years um i enjoyed it it was uh definitely not what i was expecting no um i went in expecting you know it to be kind of more of a more of a gross out fest gore laden but um i don't know when i sat down and watched it it reminded me a lot of uh carpenter's halloween it does, yeah. It's got that kind of well, because like indie horror is like like hot right now, mm-hmm. um, and a lot of indie horror I'm seeing likes to harken back to like a lot of '80s style. Yeah, like cause the other one I saw was like Starry Eyes, and that just screamed '80s in that one. Yeah, I, I still need to see that one. I haven't cut that one yet, but. but yeah, I guess people are calling it like the best just because of how it develops its, its terror over that point. Because like mm-hmm. you hear the concept and you think it's kind of going to be, like, like silly, like they're going to try to do, like, you know, STD jokes the whole time. Right, or, that's kind of what I was expecting, yeah. <laughs> and, and rape jokes, and they actually, mm-hmm. they handle it much better than you thought they would. Yeah, I was impressed. I mean, it was it, it was very, it was all just kind of very streamlined and really well shot. That was that was the main thing I saw. The cinematography was great. And the uh, the young cast, it seemed like they were, they were told to act but not overact and kind of more think about what they were going to say before they said it. I mean, that's just kind of how yeah. it seemed. It seemed very natural, the acting seemed very natural, so. Yeah, there are, there are moments in the movie where there's, like, there's, like, nothing happening. Yeah. But, the but like, the characters just work at that point. Like, there's mm-hmm. just, like, just, like, a lazy Saturday afternoon. Yeah. And they just nail that. Yeah. Uh, latest movie I saw was the, um, I don't remember what was it, uh, to pronounce it correctly, the sweet blood of Jesus Christ. Okay, <laughs> I think that's. I think it's just called the sweet blood of Jesus. Okay, um, it's Spike Lee's latest film. Oh, all right. Uh, it's. I have not seen this film, but I think it's based on a film called Ganja and Hess, which essentially just it's like a, a, a not black. I don't want to say Blackula, but like a black vampire movie. Okay, all right. Um, and it's got some. You know, if it were not made by Spike Lee, I'm sure I would say like, oh, this is from a pretty good filmmaker but uh Mm -hmm. you know considering it's spike lee this is kind of like a downturn for him i mean it's not a terrible film like it's got like a a slow burn of like him building up like this this guy who's trying to get to his victims okay uh there's a lot of weird stylistic choices there are some moments that are kind of sort of funny for what they're going for yeah um very slow movie but like every actor that he has like delivers this weird this weird way of like saying their dialogue like like they're just like reading it like straight from the text okay which makes me wonder if spike lee is trying to aim for sort of like those like schlocky 70s pictures which i think this was born from well yeah i mean that that definitely sounds like especially since the movie the last movie he did before this was his remake of old boy that it seems like right. no one saw <laughs> because no one really saw a need to remake that movie but yeah i, I mean from what i've seen of it i've I haven't seen the full film, but I've watched side by side comparisons between the original film, and it seemed like he was he was going for that kind of gritty '70s style feel to it as well. But yeah, yeah, I mean, he, he knows how to shoot stuff. It's Absolutely, just, uh, the, the the way he's been directing has just been a little questionable with his actors. Yeah, because I th- these are great actors in this movie, but like mm-hmm. they're just delivering like stilted dialogue where you kind of sort of wonder if this is his attempt at doing a B movie. Oh, okay, yeah. Because yeah, that's what it kind of feels like. It feels like mm-hmm. one of those like strange things that you, you pick up from the seventies that just sort of uh, meanders and then gets to like blood and guts. So right. It's strange. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, was anything else like noteworthy? Um. Lately? Yeah, I also watched uh, the drop. Oh, the drop, yeah. Yes, uh, it took me a while to get my hands on it because I it had a really limited release. I missed it when it was in theaters, and then uh, it seemed to take forever to come out to video. 
But, uh, yeah, I watched it, and I absolutely loved it. It was like a really good, slow-burn action thriller. Mm-hmm. And Tom Hardy just... His his performance was just amazing. I, I, I would just say watch it just for his performance, because he was great. And it's the last on-screen performance of James Gandolfini as well, which he yep. did an amazing job. It was just really well-acted, well-shot, well-written. I mean, it was written by... Um, Dennis Lehane, who mm-hmm. wrote, you know, Mystic River and Gone Baby Gone, and this this is based off of his short story, and then he, he adapted it into a screenplay. So it's just really well acted. I was very impressed. Yeah, it's probably like Gandolfini's most like noteworthy film because there are like a couple yeah. other ones are pushed up more commercially. Like um, oh, I'm trying to remember that romantic comedy he did. Um, that it came oh. out like right after his death. Oh yeah. I know exactly which I can't think of the name of it either. Yeah, it's it's the one with Julia Louis Dreyfus, which was all yeah. right. Um, but I mean, but I mean, like the drop is like like really like his his grand send off. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, because it it, it f- felt like a character that he was meant to play. <laughs> yeah, there there are certain roles he just you know he, he just melts into. Yeah. Was it you know, enough said? I think it's enough said. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> the the old romantic comedy. I think you're required to do when you reach the age of like fifty. Yeah, so. right, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I I really enjoyed that one. How about you? Anything else? Um, I'm watching a lot of stuff lately. I saw The Gallows. Okay, uh, how was that? I I'm really back and forth when it comes to found footage horror now. Yeah, kind of bothers me, but you know. Considering this was from the same guys who made Stage Fright, okay, this is just sloppy. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> like it's That's it's one of those films where it's just like you know like they got this creepy high school and they got these creepy basements and hideaways. Yeah, and they just force these kids into there as like as quickly as possible. Okay, uh, with no reason. Like there's points where they're just, they'll just be split up for no reason. Mm. There's a point where they they'll leave each other for no reason. <laughs> And also, like, they're carrying around, like, cell phone cameras and a camcorder the okay. whole time. And, of course, they're, they're filming everything. Uh, they say, like, oh, we need to use it because of the light. It's like, well, why don't you just use the light and then just shut off the camera? <laughs> it really makes me wonder, like, there's a big missed opportunity here with these films with, like, Google Glass. Oh, yeah. Because Google Glass would make sense because you just put it on and forget about it. Right. Then you wouldn't have to worry about who's holding the camera and all that. That makes sense. Because yeah. they do the whole juggling of, like, oh, who's holding it, who's doing yeah. this. And Passing the camera, yeah. And the <laughs> the whole concept I just found hilarious because it's just, like, a ghost who, who hangs people. Okay. So it just made me think, like, why don't you just get, like, scissors if he <laughs> tries to <laughs> just snip and then what's he going to do? Right. <laughs> Because he doesn't kill these kids any other way. It's all nooses and stuff. Okay. And, like, all the, like, all the scares are jump scares. Uh, there's one moment where they're going through, like, the like a creepy dark hallway that's kind of creepy. Yeah. But then they just go back to, like, having, you know, the standard, like, oh, we cut away and then we come back and then some, something's off. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> I was laughing at that, too, because there's one point... Where they're walking through the rafters, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Oh, is he behind us?" Look behind us, like, "Oh no!" And then they turn back, and there's just like nooses thrown all over the catwalk. <laughs> She's like, "Yeah, we just gave up at this point. Just throw nooses everywhere." Well, it's just—I don't know. It's just—it seems with horror lately, it's either it's either a remake or it's a quote-unquote original film that just seems to be rehashing the same idea over and over again because yeah. to me it sounds very similar to uh, As Above So Below oh yeah yeah it's yeah. totally I mean that that's become like almost like the template for you know how can you half ask your short <laughs> your found footage film. right because yeah. Uh, yeah other than that other than the weird location for that film it's just it's like scares you see coming a mile away yep. with like the most standard sound effects I've ever heard like mm. I don't think people use those anymore <laughs> For someone like the screams. Oh, okay. I love the fact that in order to be attacked by one of the ghosts, you have to see them in a corner, walk up to them, talk to them, and get right in front of their face before they before get anything you. happens. Uh, yeah, it's lazy. But yeah, I mean, like in indie horror is like trumping like commercial horror right now, like especially like what like with it follows. Like that mm. was one that got. An, extraordinary amount of press for being so small yeah um so people are taking note of these directors oh yeah well and i like how uh, the majority of the indie horror i've seen lately is kind of calling back to 
the heyday of horror, which was the seventies. Like I mean, I know. you know, you know with the follows, like I said, that reminded me a lot of John Carpenter's Halloween. Whereas like the Babadook, that reminded me a lot of uh, Polanski's Rosemary's Baby. Oh yeah, that, yeah. yeah I, I I felt a lot of that with the camera work and you know just the the, the lead actress's performance. I I still cite that as the the best horror movie I've seen in a long time is the Babadook. That that, that just, is oh movie was awesome. Yeah, I mean that's oh, that it, it's quickly becoming a benchmark like. Uh, and I'm really, they probably won't, but I'm hoping that some of these directors like bleed into stuff like, um, like VHS and, mm-hmm. uh, uh, ABCs of death. Yep. Because those are like, you know, I'm on the fence with a lot of them, but they're just, they're amazing to see these directors Yeah. just come out and just show what they got for like horror and that they're getting recognized. Yeah. Like, I don't even like that much of, uh, what's that guy's name? Like Nacho... Ficado, okay, something like that. He he was the guy who did Open Windows and um, Time Crimes. Oh yeah, I remember Time Crimes. Yep. Yeah, he's he, he, like his films. I think like th- there's their story. I think could use a little bit more, but visually he's just mm-hmm. impressive. Like he's doing stuff that no other horror director is doing. Hmm. So th- it's a great time for horror if you're if you're looking. I mean, it, yeah, it's yeah. If, if you're, you're just, seeking it out, yeah, yeah. If you're just looking at like commercial horror, you're like, yeah. oh, that's so terrible. It's like, well, you gotta look for indie stuff. Well, yeah, because you're getting movies like Ouija and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all that stuff. It's yeah, like, how do I see something awesome like It Follows, and then a month later I see Poltergeist, which oh. doesn't even want to try. It didn't. It was just like, okay, here. Yeah. It was. <laughs> oh man, and you know I. I was actually excited when that movie first started because it, it kind of got me right away when it laid, you know, kind of laid the groundwork of this struggling family that's, you know, can't, they're trying to make ends meet and the mm-hmm. father doesn't want to accept it. And I was like, okay, the family, family dynamic's working. Yeah. But then once they tried to start the scares, I was, I was, oh, okay. Like, we're just going to get all of these clowns and the tree is going to have Mr. Fantastic's arms and reach through the entire <laughs> house and grab this kid. Uh, yeah, it's just... I was out at that point. <laughs> You're totally gonna like rip off Raimi by having to go all through the house. Yeah, and exactly. <laughs> and like, I, I don't get why. Like, they're they're focusing on like the wrong parts of why Poltergeist was scary in the first place. Yeah. Like, uh, the clown is overdone. Like, the mm-hmm. clown is on the poster, and he has like like evil eyes and like sharp teeth. Yeah. And <laughs> there was nothing scary about it when you saw it on screen because you saw everything in the trailer and you saw. Full images of him on the poster and everything. Yeah, there was no yeah. nothing left to the imagination. Well, even if you if you didn't, when you see that clown first come down with like the, the sharp teeth and everything, there's no way anyone would make a clown like that or think, right. oh, that's cute. Let's keep it in the house. <laughs> exactly. So they don't even dress. Just like, oh, let's just leave the clown there and it'll do its thing. <laughs> yeah. That. Wow. Yeah. That movie. I was. I knew. I knew I wasn't gonna really enjoy it going in because I love the first one so much but mm-hmm. I yeah I, I didn't know it was going to be that lazy yeah yeah it's just a poor attempt and, and and for Sam Raimi to put his name on it I was like oh okay mm. I get the feeling like he might have started on it and said no yeah this ain't working yeah <laughs> probably yeah I don't know about that one yep. <laughs> so Ant-Man Ant-Man the man who controls ants yes how do you sell that with his <laughs> with his with his witty banter <laughs> oh man this is you know I think this film is more admirable just for the fact that it came out rather unscathed after all the crap that went on behind the scenes yeah that was that was my my one of my main thoughts coming out of the movie I was like wow this is this is a lot better movie than I expected when it with having that much production problems mm-hmm. I was really surprised yeah I mean uh, for you know, for, like, as many people as it bounced off of, like, you see, like, the screenwriter credits and, like, how many people were involved. Yeah. Uh, it, it managed to hit, like, most of the right notes and managed to retain a lot, of, I think, most of, like, what Wright was going for mm-hmm. in terms of style. It seemed like it, yeah. Yeah, because there are moments where they do kind of, like, that that quick cutting that Wright's known for. Yes. And it seems like, like, uh, Peyton was really trying to, like, like, capitalize on that. Yeah, it seemed like he, he seemed to like a few of the things that... Wright was doing and tried to keep him in, in within his own style but um, I mean I could definitely see where the comedy from Paul Rudd and Adam McKay came in mm-hmm. because it made sense for them to work together because I know they've worked together what twice on Anchorman and he's shown up in a couple of those of his, yeah. his other movies and I don't know uh, the, the, the comedy itself seemed really really good mm-hmm. 
seem to work work well. But yeah. So I mean, the one thing that I think worked more than anything in the film because it was fairly fast paced was yeah. uh, uh, the the, di- the dynamic between Rudd and uh, Michael Douglas. I thought worked perfectly. Like. Absolutely. I was I was afraid like how this was gonna work, and then by like the midpoint, I think they perfected it. Yeah, they 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 had they had really good chemistry between each other, and I mean even even when it was uh, Michael Douglas talking to him over the intercom in the helmet, like they just the banter between the two of them, and I don't know, Michael Douglas is just a good actor. Yeah, and he he, he gave his all in in a superhero movie. You know, it, it it reminded me of Robert Redford in Winter Soldier. I was like, oh wow, it's Robert Redford. He's he's giving a really good performance. And yep. I felt the same with with Michael Douglas. Absolutely. That's that's usually how it does. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, like you, you see it, and you're just like, you're like, oh, he's just gonna play Michael Douglas. Yeah, you know that that works. Hmm. Uh, you made him look younger. <laughs> you know, I was actually pretty impressed by that by that CG enhancement. It was it was a lot better than uh, Jeff Bridges and Tron. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think by this point, if we can make like two generations of Arnold look younger, we can we can easily do Michael Douglas. <laughs> True. Because <laughs> I mean, it, it, I don't know. It seemed weird, like like having that moment where like they look up at that photo of him and it looks like it was ripped straight from Wall Street. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Overall, for me, like I was. I I went in very, I guess you could say cautiously. Expect, I, kind of the same way I went into Guardians of the Galaxy last year. Yeah, like Guardians, I was gamble. like, yeah, I was yeah. like, I was like, man, that's such an obscure book. And I mean, to me, Ant Man is an, an obscure character, but to the mm-hmm. movie going public, Ant Man. I mean, I've had people at work be like, okay, so who's Ant Man? How's yeah. what are his powers? Yeah. Does he have the powers of an ant? I was like, no, he can shrink. Yeah, you know. but um. I just thought this movie. I mean, yes, it did have some some pacing issues, some issues that were with dialogue or just character or anything. But it was just fun. That was the one thing I really liked about it. It was yeah. fun. It was fast. It was it was, it was fast moving. It was easy going, and it was really funny. Like the comedy mm-hmm. in it was really good. Well, I think that's like that's Marvel's M- mo right now is that mm-hmm. just to make them fun. Yeah. But I think also right now I like they're shipped into like trying to find a certain tone for a picture. Right. Because right now, because like with, with Captain America 2 was making a spy thriller. Yep. And with Guardians of the Galaxy was making a space opera. Yep. And then with that, man, we have a, a caper film. Yeah. So which, it's a comedy heist film. Which is great because like they're, they're, they're finding different like plots and uh, different avenues to take their stories rather than just being, okay, here's the bad guy and here's the hero and then they fight. Right. Yeah. Although I did feel like this one fell into the common Marvel movie trope lately where you you get fully immersed in the characters you like you like you like the lead characters you like the hero mm. but the villain's kind of a wash <laughs> that always seems to be the case yeah <laughs> i mean i still I, I still enjoyed the movie and i liked i liked what they did with the yellow jacket character when he was in the suit but just mm-hmm. the vil, the villain himself like it was just right 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 from the get go okay he's bad he yeah. disintegrates this dude in the toilet and <laughs> he's yep. he's bad and in in the beginning it might have just been me but i felt uh, kind of a RoboCop vibe <laughs> in the very beginning of the movie. Kind of a bit, yeah. Because <laughs> like you mentioned with like the scene in the bathroom, it's just like yeah. that scene where he goes and it's like you screwed with the wrong guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. But I mean, that has kind of been the problem with Marvel movies. I mean, excluding you know Loki and for well Winter Soldier definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for the most part, Ultron. I felt like Ultron was a little rushed and yeah. Uh, Felt like he wasn't as developed as he should have been. Well, everything was rushed in that film. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, in every other, you know, the the uh, Thor two, the Iron Man films, every Iron Man film has a throwaway villain. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah I, I I was noting like at this point, wouldn't there be like a like a Stark support group at this point, given how every single one is like, oh, he's wronged me in the past. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you would think so. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just cause you, you see that moment, like they show the yellow jacket. It's like, all right, how long before he gets in it? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's quite a while too. I was I was surprised it took him that long, but yeah, like because I, I see where they're going. Like they want to try to make it like you know he's infected with the evil mm-hmm. kind of, uh, which which worked all right because like obviously he wasn't like the biggest focus of this film, right? Than anything, yeah. Because usually I think that's where they're going. Some of these films is having them be throwaway villains mm-hmm. uh, if they don't fit the plot like I mean because you could almost take Yellow Jacket out of the film and it would still be pretty incredible yeah absolutely I I totally agree um and 
the one the one thing I was kind of worried about was the was the effects because the effects I saw in the trailer I was like all right those look a little cheesy a little unpolished but I mean a, a lot of the action sequences worked really well I thought oh yeah for, for as much CGI as there there was yeah it was yeah. very impressive you know it's yeah it's no honey I shrunk the kids so. right <laughs> well and adding those those comedy moments those levity moments really helps boost those scenes too so well I mean yeah because like having them be self aware. Yeah. So that, you know, they can actually, like, sell it. Yeah. Because, like, they're, they're not going to, you know, glaze over the fact that there's a guy who can control ants. It's kind of weird. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm glad. Like, I didn't want them to just go nonchalant. They're like, oh, okay, I can control ants. So. Yeah. They didn't want to go the whole Green Lantern route be like, I control green things. Yeah. And just... <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, that seems to be, like, the best route. Uh, yeah. For... Like, I can kind of see the points where Wright wanted to leave based on what they w- did with the script. Yeah. Uh, namely, just including the Avengers, mm-hmm. I think. Because, like, he's been working on this since, what, like, 2006? Yeah, they said... I I think I read almost 10 years he had been trying to, to, yeah. to make it. Yeah. So I remember back in 2006, it was, like, a big deal. Like, they mm-hmm. said, like, Wright is going to write Ant-Man. Yeah. 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 And... I'm trying to think of when that original test footage landed. That was, ooh, that was, was like that 2012 or maybe that was, before then. I think that was like 2011. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty far back. Yeah, it was. And I remember it. It didn't hit the internet for a while. Like it, they they kept that under wraps for a while, and then they finally released it. But yeah, I mean his. Um, I mean, like you said, you could definitely feel his his style in it, but mm-hmm. it was a little more watered down. Yeah, I mean, you know, no one can match like his perfect style of like of like cutting that. Yeah, this is sort of like someone's like like student attempt to get that close, right? Which they they almost kind of do. Like you can see like shades of Wright's writing in there. Yeah. Well, and I I found it funny when you know even back when he was announced as uh, to be working on Ant Man, people were like, oh, he's he's finally gonna make a, a comic book film. But we got a comic book film from him yeah. <laughs> in Scott Pilgrim, which I thought was great. I, yeah. I enjoyed that movie, too. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, for as many for as much as, like, they shoehorn the Avengers in there, like, which you could kind of glaze over. Yeah. Uh, the script actually remains pretty solid. Yeah. For the and most part. I still enjoyed that scene. I mean, it, it, it did seem tacked on. It seemed like something they're like, okay, well, we need to we need to make sure people are knowing that they're watching a Marvel universe film yeah but um yeah i thought it still worked i like um i like anthony mackie as 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 falcon sure, so yeah. it was it was it was cool to see him show up and well it was hand it was handled well because it like it it of course like it answers like the question that everyone always wonders like well why don't we bring in the avengers yeah. to this point yeah which is what everyone asks with that every single individual film yeah so uh so i think finally to address that and then just you know just throw them into like civil war at the end there so right yeah and um yeah the uh the mid credits and end credit scene i thought those 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 were interesting they raised some good questions about what's what's going to follow in the remaining films yeah up to infinity war but the the mid credit was i think like much much more of a better note to end on than uh yeah. Uh, than just like the preview of Civil War, yeah, which is like I, I kind of got the same vibe at like the end of the first Captain America movie, right? It's like there's a really awesome movie coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we just we just want to make sure you know this is coming next year. Yeah, it was hilarious that the screening we went to. There was one guy who was really excited at the mid credit scene. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> like you just went in there to like like scream like oh I know that hero. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know who that is. <laughs> Well, and I liked. Um, it was funny because the screening I was in, I was expecting more of a reaction when they made the uh, the reference to Spider Man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was it was a surprising tiny reference, but it was small, but like it it made like everyone in the row that we were in go nuts. Yeah. And oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Wonder why. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, yeah. And I was like, oh, did they did they reshoot that? Was that was that originally planned to be part of? You know. It it makes you wonder. Yeah, kind of like where. The, parts they wanted to change right scripts and yeah. you can kind of feel that through there yeah but I mean once I heard that I was like okay well the people working on the, the solo Spider-Man film need to take some notes on uh, the way this script was written because Spider-Man should be that fun yeah <laughs> absolutely we, we shouldn't have the the brooding Spider-Man that we've had for so long yeah yeah <laughs> which I you know I, I don't 
I didn't mind like Amazing Spider-Man as much, but uh, I I enjoyed the first one. Yeah, the, like the the first one, I, I kind of dug the direction they were going. I mean, because mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, because I I already had my you know fun and bouncy Spider-Man with the uh, the Raimi films. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, you know, let, let's see where they're going with this. But then like the second film is just like saying like, okay, we are gonna plan a series. So we're just gonna bloat this series up as much as we can. Yeah. This could have been two and a half to three movies. We're just going to jam it into two hours and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, Marvel's been pretty good at, like, you know, keeping their their tie-ins, like, very short. Yeah. And that was the main problem with Amazing Spider-Man 2. Mm-hmm. It's like, we're just going to open with, like, 15 minutes of something that has nothing to do with any of this story, but we'll <laughs> leave it on the shelf. Yeah. Yeah, and I know that they... There's there's a deleted scene on the Blu-ray that they said they were gonna try to get into the film where Peter's dad isn't actually al- is yeah, actually, actually alive and yeah I don't know and then I I read recently like what they were planning to do for the third film and I'm really glad it didn't happen <laughs> yeah they're really getting a case of sequelitis there where it's just mm-hmm. you know throwing too much in the pot and yeah trying to make it work well I I think it it was really smart on Sony's part to bring Marvel into the mix and mm-hmm. use that. Well, just use the just the marketability of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd be crazy not to right now with all mm-hmm. that. Uh, See, so yeah, I mean, like, how would you rank Ant Man? You know, the other ones? okay. Well, I was I was I was thinking about this because it's definitely like it was much better than I expected it was going to be. So automatically, it got a pretty high ranking in my mind. But among yeah. the like. Trying to because because the other day I was thinking about rating all of the Marvel films, which sure. Winter Soldier is like my top. That that's still I I, I think for like, everyone right now, yeah, they're the consensus among most people is that Winter Soldier is the best so far. Yeah, it's it's going to be super difficult for them to top that one, and I'm and I'm fine with that. If that's if that's the 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 top tier, I'm totally fine with that because I I could watch that movie every day. That, yep. that movie's really good, and then um, I mean underneath it, I would I would I would put the first Avengers. Mm-hmm. And then uh, probably Iron Man, because I, I really like the original Iron Man, even though... Oh, yeah. Everyone, I think everyone still does. You still go back and watch that film, and it's still yeah. really damn good. Yeah, I would say Ant-Man, to me, kind of falls right in the middle. Mm-hmm. It's definitely... I don't know, I would I would actually put it above the second Avengers film. As, as much as I enjoyed oh, that yeah. movie, I felt like... I felt Age of Ultron was kind of more of the same. Yeah, it didn't feel like it grew very much. Mm-hmm. I mean, we got to see more of Hawkeye, which was nice. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it just it just felt like kind of the same old, and like we weren't getting the story that was intended. Yeah. It, it felt like there was a lot of edits. Well, it, it yeah, just like it like everything about it felt rushed about how much they wanted to put in there, and it comes like dangerously close to being to having that type of like sequelitis where it's like yeah. we got to throw all these characters in here. Yep. And we got to throw all these events in here to make them work. Yeah, and it eventually just boiled down to just them shooting robots on an island. So. Yeah, and that was that was yeah that was it. But yeah, I would I would definitely put it among the you know some of the the better Marvel films. I would put it among like definitely under Guardians of the Galaxy. But <laughs> yeah. um, but I would yeah I would I would put it near like. Uh, Incredible Hulk because I actually really enjoyed Incredible Hulk. Yeah, I do. I mean, yeah. a lot of people really didn't dig that one when it came out, but yeah. I, I gotta say that's probably been the best Hulk interpretation I've seen yet. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I really like what 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 Ruffalo has done, but I mm-hmm. I liked Edward Norton in the role, and I, that that movie just moved. It was a really good action movie. Like it's never let up. Yeah, I, I mean it's one. it's yeah, it's it's kept very tight and not that dense yeah. for being a Hulk film which is what it, it, it should be because it, it's more character than anything mm-hmm. um, so yeah where would you put it I would put it probably right below Guardians of the Galaxy because it is sort of on that same tone like it, it felt very very fast and very tightly edited mm-hmm. um, and it just kind of like it, it, it kind of felt like it, it knew that it was trying to be like a superhero caper film yeah and was just snapping quickly through it so it, could, it kind of felt like it went by really fast yeah but at the same time like a lot of elements work it's one of those things where you you kind of might have to go back for a second viewing just to see how it all plays out just because it zips so quickly through everything yeah uh, but for being as, as fast as it goes through it I mean they nailed everything that they needed to yeah like I was I was shocked at how much just how much story they fit into 
how quickly the pace was moving. Yeah, yeah. especially if we're doing like a Marvel origin film at this point. Yeah. And just to like, and I just like the fact that they didn't really leave any elements like hanging. Yeah. Like, obviously, there's the time to Civil War, but if you didn't have that, it'd still be mm -hmm. a fine film that doesn't leave anything like, you know, if they'd never made another Ant Man movie after this, yeah. you know, you'd still get everything you wanted. Well, and I, I actually like the fact, I like that you brought up the fact that it was an origin film because it didn't, it didn't feel like a heavy origin film like 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 mm -hmm. we were just deep in the in the backstory and how the character became the hero like they they laid out what Hank Pym had done in the 70s and 80s mm -hmm. very very quickly and just uh, clearly which was nice and yeah. it you're like okay that's what happened you know they just dropped you in and then they dropped you back to where you were mm -hmm. and it just moved really well yeah that's what mean, I liked yeah and just like uh, I mean cuz that works well I think we're doing the whole like caper tone which they stuck to incredibly well yeah like I think if anything what Marvel does best is that if they set out to do a type of picture like that yeah uh, they they nail it perfectly mm -hmm. like you know Captain America like outside of like a superhero film it works exceptionally well as a, a political thriller yeah uh, that, that that's I think what they do best at this point so I would love to see these different type of chemical kind of like subgenre films of like superhero films where they mm -hmm. pick, a, pick an idea and stick with what they want to do instead of just having the hero fight the villain. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they've been doing that really well. Yeah. And yeah, I hope I hope that, that carries over into movies like, you know, Black Panther and Doctor Strange and mm. I'm actually looking really forward to the Captain Marvel movie. Oh yeah. I yeah. think I I I mean for it's, it's having very... the first female centric movie. Yeah. That could be excellent. I mean it's <laughs> it's it's very early but uh, but I, I am looking forward to that. Like that that's like ways out. That's like being excited for the Inhumans movie, right? Which true. <laughs> which, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm excited which, to see which, Inhumans. That film, one's but. after Infinity War Part Two, right? That that kind of closes out. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. going to be like their their Ant Man. Okay. Like it's like it's going to like bring up the rear. Okay. Of this. Wow. Um, and, unless they they will probably like change dates or something like that. Yes. Yeah. I know they always flip flop them around depending on what DC does or. Yeah. I don't know. Whenever the next Star Wars is going to drop, so <laughs> right. Well, yeah, because we're going to get one every summer for the next at least six summers. Oh man, there's a bomb you want to stay away from, <laughs> <laughs> right? Clean up. Uh, but you know, the one thing I got to say, well, the other thing I have to say about Ant Man is, it's um, I wasn't okay. So after Mad Max, yeah, I wasn't expecting to really enjoy another movie this summer. Well, no, no. <laughs> Mad Max is it. You feel like, okay, yeah. I, I, I peaked. Yeah, I you're like, all right, it. I'm done. This is the beginning of May, but I'm done. But, you know, I've been, this this summer has been has been really good. I've been pleasantly surprised with a lot of the movies this summer. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, there's there's been a few that I've, I've kind of avoided. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, yeah, like, I, I had a lot of fun at Jurassic World. Uh, I really enjoyed Inside Out. Oh, yeah. Um, you and, know, that's like, that's, that's, you know, for Pixar, this is like they're they've if, finally found their their way back. <laughs> if this isn't like their their best film to date, it's definitely up there in the top three. It's absolutely up there. Like I I would not be surprised at all if this ends up as like best picture Oscar this year. Yeah, I could definitely see it because it was oh man, it was just so well thought out and well made, and the the animation and the performances. I mean, just for voice acting was just fantastic. Yeah, I mean, just, uh, like, it, it does what Pixar does best, which is just, you know, boil a story down, rip it out, like, and then do it over again and again and again until you perfect it. Yep. And I think they really did that. And Yeah. And it does what, like, all Pixar films do, where it's like, um, let's see how fast we can make the audience cry. Right. Oh, it totally did. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I, I'll definitely admit it. I was, I was wiping away tears in that movie, because... Oh, yeah. But, but yeah, I totally agree with that, because the... The, the script just seems so polished and so tight. Like there was, yeah. there was no no wiggle room to be like, oh yeah, there's there's a problem with that plot point. No, it was mm -hmm. flawless. Yeah, yeah, especially like relating back to Minnesota. It's oh yeah, like that had me right away. I was like, oh, okay, I, I could totally tell they're in Minnesota. <laughs> like, like that whole film is just like just hits home like so hard mm -hmm. for everything. Like, like if, if you're a parent, and you, you know, you bring kids to this, you're gonna look at this you're like, oh my god, and it's gonna be one of those like experiences like with Up, where like all yeah. the kids are gonna be digging on it, and they're gonna be like, why the heck are all like adults crying at right? this? <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> Jesus, just the, the first 15 minutes of Up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just that, the, the no dialogue scene of an entire marriage, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it, and it definitely felt like a, a, a return to that form, to, to Up in Toy Story 3, you yeah. know, because, I mean, after Toy Story 3, we got, what, Cars 2? Yeah. And then, <laughs> uh, uh, was it Brave after that? Then we got Brave, yeah. Yep, and then Monsters University, University. which 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 I thought got a little too much flack. I I enjoyed Monsters University. I loved the heck out of that. I thought like you know people weren't ready to call it like Pixar's big return, but I'm saying like yeah. okay, if this isn't their return, then it's definitely them saying like look, we have this. We it's know the what next we're doing. step. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm a little I'm a little concerned about the good dinosaur with all the production problems that has been having. Yeah. Um, because I heard recently that I mean yes they changed directors a while back but they mm-hmm. recently are chose to scrap all of the voice work that they had and are working with a almost completely new voice cast. Mm-hmm. So. Well, that, I mean this has happened like with with most Disney productions. Um, it just usually doesn't hit that close to the release date. True. Like th- yeah. that that's the one thing that just irks a lot of people about that I mean because like if you go back and like, look at like uh, um, like the Emperor's New Groove mm-hmm. which went through like tons and tons of changes yeah and and it, and it still turned out to be a good film like even like some like, like Ratatouille I think changed up a lot of its story like, yeah the way through yeah and still turned out okay so mm-hmm. um, so I guess like th- that's what makes that's probably what I think is going to make The Good Dinosaur very interesting to see because it, it'd be interesting to see like how how well it can come out on skate yeah uh, just like Ant-Man. So. Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. But yeah, so so like I was saying, like like the summer, I've, I've been really surprised with, with a lot of the movies this summer. I was uh, not necessarily let down, but, because I didn't expect it to be that great, but Tomorrowland was was yeah. a disappointment. <laughs> oh, it was, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I liked I liked a lot of the, the ideas. It just mm-hmm. seemed like, it seemed like an almost movie to me. Like like they had a great idea, but they just couldn't quite grasp it with a script. Right. And yeah, it just felt a little, a little too unfinished and hokey for me. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's one of those things. Where it's like it, it wants to dabble in like great visuals and then uh, and then insert like a message. Mm-hmm. Uh, the problem is, I don't think they meld as well as they thought. Yeah. Like they're, they're moments like okay here's your fun you know snappy robots and everything and then oh here's your apocalyptic message about the world now it's terrible yeah. and <laughs> which is great because that, that's what you want to see in a summer family right film. exactly well it, it, the funny thing is I took I, I took my eight year old nephew to go see it mm-hmm. and because it, it was his choice he wanted to see it he, he was really excited from the trailers and everything and he got bored midway through because I mean there yeah. wasn't really a lot going to there was a lot of dialogue it was very very dialogue heavy and mm-hmm. there really wasn't a lot of visuals in it that were I guess promised by the trailers yeah. Because, but yeah he was he, he got bored and I was like oh man alright well it was jumping on like so many things it feels like a like a weird retread of like the last Starfighter at yeah. points yeah no absolutely <laughs> yeah which I mean that, that film was just kind of like all, like all over the place right but, and uh but but it was so admirable for like keeping on track. This film like wants it feels like this film wants to do like so much, mm-hmm. and it has a decent message. But man, does it have man? It's like my head hurt because it kept smacking me in the head at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it really did. Yeah. Like uh, I I don't know. Like it it, it felt like you know worse than like Wally did. <laughs> it was like Wally was at least subtle with it. It was bit. as subtle as it could be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's what I like about the film. It was it was very very preachy, but it was kind of nice about it. Yeah. <laughs> where it's tomorrow well, it, it, it gets to like that one point it. where it kind of loses you, where like the 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 villain of the film like starts stating, uh, you know, like why like why humanity is terrible, and yeah. it goes off on a rant for like three minutes yeah you just feel like, like oh everyone supports the apocalypse and they run to it it's like yeah. should I feel bad for watching Mad Max <laughs> <laughs> no you should never feel bad for watching Mad Max <laughs> I can't wait for that Blu-ray <laughs> <laughs> yeah Tomorrowland I think is one of those films we're gonna remember more for everyone who was like involved with it more than anything yeah and I think that was that was another major problem is I saw that I saw that like the weekend after I saw Mad Max and yeah. I saw Mad Max two days in a row. <laughs> and, yeah. It's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, is, I mean, because, yeah, with 
going with that that whole tone of just saying like, oh, it's so terrible. And it's like, and it, it has like a decent message at the end. I mean, its whole message of saying like, you know, like, oh, it's easy to to knock something down, but it's harder to build something. Build up, yeah. Uh, which they never do in the film. <laughs> right. <laughs> which they, they get to a point where it's like, oh, we can build. Yes, we're gonna do it. It's like it's a good idea, right? <laughs> okay. Well, what did what did you do? Why couldn't we see that? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, which kind of confused me because like okay so they're gonna go back into the past and get all these great scientists to mm-hmm. just do the same thing like see the the great future and then yeah. just be inspired I guess and then decide that there is no future with the human race <laughs> like I, I have expect like some like ad for a college to pop up at the end that's what it seemed <laughs> with like. how they, they they just cut to all these engineers and yeah. scientists <laughs> It's like, what will you do with Tomorrowland you? Because <laughs> it really does, because like, you look at that Tomorrowland logo, and it looks like it should be on the back of a jersey. Yeah, so. oh, absolutely. Or, like, the the, the insignia on, a, on an acceptance letter. Yeah. Yeah. But, that, okay, so I, I have not seen, because I'm trying to decide if I want to see it in the theater or not, I have not mm-hmm. seen Terminator Genesis yet. It's, you know, it's very torn. Like, I think it okay. works better as a, as like a as like an homage than a sequel. Okay. Because I don't know, I I like the film on the basis that it's saying, look, you know, everyone's familiar with like the whole like timeline of Terminator. Mm-hmm. So let's just screw it up. And it's convoluted and at times dumb, but I'm like, you know, this is this is the good route to go cuz you know, mm-hmm. people compare it to like Terminator 2 and it's not quite on that level. Okay. I was but, gonna say, well, that would be a lot. Well, it's not a level in heart, but I think in terms of like the, the building of action. Okay. Uh, and like the sense of like let's let's go prevent doomsday. Like it's you know it, it kind of harkens back to that. Okay. Which is why it works better as as like an homage than like, than like a sequel because this is just saying like oh remember all the fun stuff of Terminator. Well, we're yeah. gonna make like our own little fan film, <laughs> which which, right. sort of, that, which is you know that's that's the good and bad of the film. Okay. Like the, the good is that it 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 brings back all the fun stuff you liked about Terminator. The bad thing is it, it doesn't feel the need to make it mesh into a like a different or better film. Hmm. So, I mean, if I I guess the best thing about it is to see uh, J.K. Simmons play the role of. Um, Oh, I forgot the actor. The, the guy from Terminator Two is the psychologist. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, that okay. role is played by J.K. Simmons. And I, I always liked that character. I yeah. even, I, I even liked when they brought him back in the third one. I, I, I thought that was, that was actually one of my favorite scenes in the third movie yeah. when he showed up. And this is kind of like an amalgamation of it. This is like, this is like a guy who like used to be a cop, and then he's like saved in '84. Okay. And then he, when they fast forward to the future, he plays this like conspiracy theory nut. It's like I, I know there, there's there's robots around here. <laughs> like not to spoil too much, like but there because he's like the comic relief. There's a moment where he walks into the security camera room, mm-hmm. and it's all like busted up, and he's just in, like goddamn time traveling robots busting up everything. <laughs> It's like that. That's fun. That made the movie for me. Well, it it, it it sounds like the movie doesn't take itself too seriously, which I would actually like. The fact that yeah. you know it's not. Okay. We, it doesn't take itself to check it off too seriously, and it harkens back to a lot. Like like honestly, like Arnold's like the biggest cut up of the picture. Oh, of course. Obviously, yes. Yeah, because uh, yeah, cause that's why a lot of people say it feels more like Terminator Two because he is trying to be that kind of like nice guy Terminator doesn't quite know what to do. Is like fish out of water. Okay. Um, has a lot of inappropriate lines. So. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, yeah that, that's how you should do Arnold in the Terminator movies. I mean, yeah, because I think most people hate it because like, we're long past that point where we can have like the, the horror version of Terminator. Right. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the the sci-fi angle still works. But yeah, I, 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 I was re-watching the original recently, and that one does have just that hardcore horror feel mm-hmm. to it just the that horror slasher chase movie and it yeah. still works that movie i mean made in what 84 right 80 uh 84 yeah yeah, yeah. and th- th- that movie s- still works mm-hmm. well even like terminator 2 for as big like a as, a as for as big as a special effects blockbuster as it was it still had that like huge horror element to it of being like yeah. stalked and tracked mm-hmm. so. yeah and it was definitely something that the other sequels did not have yeah, Rise of the Machines or Salvation. Yeah, <laughs> which that's the thing. Like, there's a new Terminator they bring out in here, and I kind of like it because 
not so much for like its gimmick of what it can do, but what the Terminator is. Like it's okay. not just like the silent killer trying to trying to find them. Like it has right. more of a relation to it. Like I, I don't want to state the spoiler for it, but it okay. does make sense because like the 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 marketing already spoils most of it. I think I know what it is, but yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's always been the problem with like doing new Terminator movies is trying not to spoil it mm-hmm. because. Like their their reasoning for it makes sense because you have to throw something new out there so you can get people right. to go and see another Terminator film. Right. Because if you just say like, "Oh, it's a new Terminator and Arnold's back," it's like he's been back before. Why should I see it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's been in every single one of them. Even Salvation had a CG version of him. Yep. Yeah. I mean, a bus flips. That's the reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There there are moments where it's just action for the sake of action, but yeah. for. For being that, it's it staged really well. I think. Okay. It it, I don't know, it, it, it kind of felt like like true lies, or it's like you know, <laughs> it, let's just blow stuff up for the heck of it. If yeah. it looks good, we'll do it. Yeah, and that that movie. Oh man, I still love that movie. <laughs> it's just a fun movie. But okay, so so I should probably definitely see it in theaters then. Before uh, it's out. It, it was worth it. I mean, I, okay. I saw it at the the IMAX, and it was it was pretty decent for being an IMAX. Um, okay. It's it's probably worth seeing in the theater. I think if you're a big fan of Terminator, then it it'll please. If you go in just expecting, you know, just have fun with it. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's the best way because a lot of people have been been banging down on it. I mean, mostly because it's I not delivering more. Yeah. Than what you'd expect. Yeah, and I don't think well I, I don't think the box office has been pretty big on it. No, and I mean it. It came out at a really terrible time. Like yeah. this is like. This is like an era of like uh, this whole summer has been like box office, you know, explosions. That right. you gotta steer your movies in the right direction. Yeah, towards. which started off with Furious Seven, which I mean, yeah. I expected that movie to, to make money because the, all those movies make money, but not to make. I mean, it's at like one point five billion worldwide right now. Oh yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but it, you know, it, it sells well because like a. Uh, you know, I've heard people mention this before that like action movies are the best to sell foreign because oh yeah because like you, you don't have to translate much like yeah. from what I've heard like there are like these theaters where they don't even bother translating them. There's just someone sitting up it's in front of a microphone, just <laughs> saying whatever it is. Like oh okay, I think this character said that and that. I think Ultron said this. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love to see that. <laughs> Which makes sense. I mean, because yeah. that's like the the easiest sell. Yeah. Um, especially if you make it look like an international film, which they, oh, where did they shoot this? Like they shot a couple places around the world. Um, Furious Seven. Yeah, yeah. Furious Seven. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the different locations, but I mean that movie hops all over the world. Well, that series. Yeah. Has since the since the fourth one they've. Hmm. Yeah. And then they've always tried to find some ridiculous stuff because that's the reason everyone goes they go to see like okay what ridiculous thing can they do now like stop a tank or yeah break down a giant plane <laughs> <laughs> yeah for like 25 minutes that scene was so long in, in the sixth one wow because yeah, yeah we're, we're long past the point of street racing now yeah. now it's saying yeah. like okay how can we make this as much like wacky racers as possible because <laughs> exactly. it is just I like, didn't think that it totally is wacky the, the racers cars spend more time <laughs> off the ground than they do on the ground yeah <laughs> Yeah, especially in this last one. Wow, <laughs> but yet I still I still find them entertaining. Like I really well, enjoyed fun. watching the seventh one, and I think it's because they they keep them fairly centered as kind of like spy movies, mm-hmm. and and they they realize how ridiculous the action is and play it up. Yeah, so it's kind of like you know like letting everyone in on the joke. So it's like everyone is having fun with it the same way that you know we were having fun with like GI Joe. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know, I guess, like, the, the whole, whole draw with, like, Paul Walker in it for people to see, like, oh, what are they going to do? Yeah. Because that's usually, like, a your huge draw going to go off stuff like Heath Ledger's Seven Dark Knights. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, The Rock basically yeah. winking at the camera the whole movie. <laughs> well, there's, there's a few part scenes. He's not even in the film that much. Yeah. He still manages to be the best part. <laughs> he absolutely did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see. We'll see how he does as Jack uh, as Jack Burton. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. But just the, the whole thing of them, like, just the whole like the fact that they keep it like like this family element, like they're this yeah this cozy mob. Family. It just I don't know. It, it works without without dopey. It's trying to be and trying to be yeah. great with the characters. Yeah, I thought Kurt Russell was a nice added character. I hope oh, they bring him back in the next one. I mean, 
at this point, the, the whole film has just seemed like, who can we bring on to see how much fun they can have with it? Yeah, which, absolutely. Which Kurt Russell is the perfect pick because he yeah. knows how to have fun. With it. Like seriously, there's a moment where like you know he's gonna be ushered off screen and he just sort of like winks at the camera, like, <laughs> he okay, totally I've, had, does. I've had my fun. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> see you in the next Escape from Whatever movie. <laughs> right, exactly. No, we'll see you in the next Tarantino movie. That's what I'm looking forward to. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this this fall is going to be brutal. Oh, man, it's, well, not even just, just the winter. Like, Christmas in general is going to be nuts with all the releases. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially for, uh, like, kids' films, too. Mm-hmm. Like, uh... Like the the second hotel Transylvania is coming out. And, oh, that's right. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to that because I don't know. I really, I really dug the. First I love the here. first one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm I, I can't believe it. Uh, well, I, I was such a fan of them growing up that I I can't believe that I'm excited for it. Mm-hmm. The Goosebumps trailer. The Goosebumps. Yeah. I, I was I, I'm actually excited to see that movie. I mean, it's it it, it reminds me of the horror centric kids films that I grew up watching. Yeah. You know so. I mean, I was a bigger fan of Are You Afraid of the Dark, but yeah, <laughs> but this look, but this looks like a lot of fun because I think they're actually going to address kind of some of that nostalgia for it. I yeah, think. yeah, and I was I was definitely more of a fan of the books than the TV series, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I don't know. Watching the trailer it reminded me of like Hocus Pocus and Gremlins and yeah, you know, just the stuff I I, I was allowed to watch when I was a kid because I was always interested in horror. But it was, yeah, you know. well, I mean, a, a horror film that that kids can watch, I'm all for. Yeah. So. Absolutely. That that definitely has to happen. Mm-hmm. Like the other thing is um the the Peanuts movie. Um, <laughs> I that looks just amazing from what I've seen from the trailers. That that animation is just like it's it's crazy because it is CG, but mm-hmm. it looks it looks like the old animated Christmas and you know holiday specials that that we grew up watching. I was I was really impressed by that trailer. Yeah. It's like the, this weird amalgamation between like doing like kind of like a toon boom thing and then doing it with like 3D. Mhm. Uh and I think just like the whole style of it and just paying attention to like the little details like like yep. pig pen's dust and yep. then having the the little marks of woodstock just all that attention to it. Yeah. Like if this were done like any other year before this, I think they would have really you know, half-assed all this, all these mm-hmm. elements, but I think now that we're in to a point with our computer animation, where it's not a question of like if we can do it, it's a question of like how we want to do it. Yeah. So if someone said like, how do we want to do the Peanuts movies? Like, let's make it look like the original, mm-hmm. and they can do it. Now. Well, and it's uh, oh, remind me, who's the director again? Oh, it's uh, it's one of the, it's one of the regulars from Blue Sky. I'm trying to remember. Okay. He's it's a familiar one. I think okay. it's like I want to say it's Du Bois. Okay, let's see. I'll look it up real quick here. I know this is kind of like the one thing that's kind of worrying people as a director. Steve Martino. Oh, Steve Martino. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what he. Okay. Yeah, he worked on Horton Hears a Who. Yeah. So so pretty much and the majority of Blue Sky stuff. Yeah. Okay. At cool. The beginning. Which is. Little little worrying, but I, I think, you know, based on what I've seen from the trailer, I think you can do it. The one thing that everyone was really worried about was that the trailer had pop music in it. Yeah, I, and, I'd heard that. But, but, like, from what I heard, they assured them, no, we are going to use, like the, like, the original, like, jazz scores yeah. that they have for the specials. Yeah. But, I mean... Yeah, it did use pop music, but it used the Who. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, okay. Which, yeah, it'd, it'd be cool if they had the Who in there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not like the, the Peanuts has never done never used like semi-popular music before yeah like i remember watching one called uh, uh flash beagle which okay. actually did have the like a flash dance song with, <laughs> except they rewrote it to be flash beagle oh nice so, <laughs> i think i remember that yeah uh so yeah there's a lot of grace but but i mean yeah keeping like that 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 jazz tone to it uh yeah. is what kept those films you know not so in your face but also like very very relatable yeah because that was the great thing about penis is that it, it kept the kids very it kept them like kids for as for as like as adult dialogue that they were given mm-hmm. uh they you know it, it felt like they were kids it be, i mean it felt real yeah it, it felt real mostly because yeah they were voiced by kids right um which is the best route you can go with it so. yeah and i love that they did that with this new one i mean the kid voice cast sounds spot on yeah yeah i was surprised I was like really with, impressed. With, with linus I mean, yeah that 
felt like I was taken back. Because, I mean, like, they've had <laughs> they've had different voice actors over the years, and, like, they've mm-hmm. changed tone, like, every now and then. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, like, that, that line has just, like, took me right back to the, the, the 65 Christmas special. Yeah. So. Absolutely. So, I don't know. I'm a huge Peanuts fan. So yeah. I'm not <laughs> for this. Well, you have to be if you live in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I point that out whenever I, I watch those, like, because I think in uh, one of the Christmas ones, there's one where, like, you can see, like, a flyer in the back for, like, the St. Paul Saints. Oh, really? So, yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah, and there's, that. like, tiny little nuggets of Minnesota here and there. That's so. really cool. Huh. Um, what was I, there, there's another one coming out in December. Oh, yeah, I pulled it up. Um, it's the new Inaritu film. Oh. Which he's, um, he's already releasing a new one this, this December called The Revenant. Yep. And uh, they just posted the teaser trailer. I think it was either yesterday or the day before. Uh, yesterday, I believe they did. Yeah. It looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like it's still handheld. It, it it looks similar to the way he shot Birdman, but it's it's mm-hmm. like a it's a period piece. Yeah. And yeah, with Tom Hardy and Leonardo DiCaprio, I'm I'm, I'm totally in. And After that's... how great Birdman was, I I will watch I will watch him film two people talking in a diner I, yeah. <laughs> I would watch a whole movie just he's just such a great director and yeah well, he's, he's been at great. it for years I mean yeah um, I'm trying to, I can't remember all the films but he had like that that trilogy of death series which is mm-hmm. incredible uh, which well there was a Morris Peros that was like his oh, first film, Morris right? Peros yeah, yeah. That, that's the first part of it yep and then oh 28 grams yeah, oh that's yeah 21 grams yep yeah. that was good and uh, well, he did Babel did Babel yep yep and beautiful. Yeah, he's just he's just an amazing director. Yeah, it's, I was I was really happy that he he won that mm-hmm. best director and best picture. Yeah, Oscar. Well, especially doing something so like different. I think that's yeah. the, that's the biggest thing about him. He always finds a way to make these sort of stories like come to life. Yeah, just with just the way he works the camera. I mean, mm-hmm. he's one of those guys like um, oh, uh, Alejandro, uh, Gravity right. Guy. Oh, um, Alfonso Caron. Alfonso Caron, yeah. yeah. He's one of those guys, like, you know, he works the camera, and mm-hmm. you can tell it's his film, uh, and that and that he's, you know, behind it, like, giving his own style. Yeah. I mean, c- kind of like, just like like Edgar Wright, like, there's certain directors, you can just look at the way it's You shot, know it's their film. And yeah. You know it's them. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's definitely one of those. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one, and then, of course, you know, Star Wars will be oh, yeah. out around Christmas as well. Yeah, no one's going to see it. Yeah, no one's going to see that one. <laughs> That one's definitely not going to be the fastest to a billion dollars. Another Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's a new Star Wars coming out? <laughs> I gotta say, I like that Comic-Con footage they showed. I still haven't seen it, actually. Well, it's, it's great because the com- the footage they showed at Comic-Con is all behind-the-scenes stuff. See, I like that. There's there's no... Well, there's no clips. There's just, like, on-set stuff. Okay. Which is just amazing to see because that's all I want to see. Like, they just yeah. show all the practical effects... Uh, like they show them getting in the Millennium Falcon on the, on the sound stage where it's bucking up and around and oh, they're showing awesome. the sets and all like oh man all the creature designs that they showed just in that little bit of footage yeah it was incredible well I mean when I heard when I heard that, that it was going to be Abrams I was like oh okay it's it, it's going to be in good hands he's he's a fan clearly he's a fan and yeah from from hearing that it sounds like he's trying to keep it as authentic and just nostalgic as possible which is exactly yeah. what it needs to be which I think is, is like the biggest draw of the film more than anything it's going to bring people yeah. in yeah well but, I mean I watched I watched that that second trailer not the tiny teaser that they released but that second one that was released yeah and I'll admit it I cried at the end of that trailer like it, it totally got me when they showed when they showed Han and Chewbacca I was like alright <laughs> Take my money, please. Yep. That's <laughs> your comments. Yep. And I mean, it, when that happened, like, cause when the first teaser came out, they showed the little, uh, the little droid, like, was it like B8? Yeah, it's B- like that. B88 or something like that, yeah. And I don't want to say A88, because that's a, a <laughs> sex. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> People are going to confuse that now. Yeah. <laughs> but when that, that footage first hit, like, you looked at that and you think, like, okay, that's CGI. That's what I thought. And, like, a week later, they said, like, no, no, it's practical effect. And everyone's sort of like, just be like, I don't know how that can be a practical effect. I don't know how it works. And then they get to the, the they get to the trailer debut and they bring that thing out on stage. Yeah, it rolled out. And, <laughs> and then everyone's just like, okay, I guess it is practical effect. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I was kind of a, you know, because I, I bought it, like, I was amazed. Like, okay, that kind of looks like a practical effect when I looked at the footage. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if, if that's the case, and I, you know, I'd buy it. And yeah. Then, 
they bring it out on stage like okay now I really buy it <laughs> yeah oh absolutely yeah I'm surprised I'm surprised I haven't seen that Comic Con footage because I feel like I've seen everything else that happened at Comic Con I mean yeah. it's it's to the point now where I feel like you don't need to purchase a ticket because you're, you're going to see or all of the panel stuff the, the next day or even the next few hours afterward because well, yeah at this point it's not even like a, a, a like a actual like convention or now it's just like like press release central oh yeah absolutely because uh, honestly a show almost if i went to comic-con i would not go to hall h yeah i would not go to see any of this stuff i would like to go to like the stuff that they don't talk about mm-hmm. um like when they have like the q and a's with like paul dini stuff yep like because that that stuff's like amazing to see and it's not going to be as crowded mm-hmm. and, and it's just like interesting to like see the creators in that level rather than just you know going to a crowded room and then seeing them up on the big screen there <laughs> yeah exactly well and, and they also have a lot of um, stuff that's related to believe it or not actually creating comic books <laughs> yeah <laughs> because I know they have panels about they you still know, make those yeah there. right like wait comic con what, 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 what did that how did that start were there actually comic books there but uh, yeah and I know I mean well I gotta say you know the Suicide Squad trailer came out and the the new uh, Superman v Batman Justice League prologue whatever yeah. they're calling it uh, you know we saw all that but the the best thing I saw come out of Comic Con was that Ash vs. the Evil Dead trailer for the TV series oh yeah that <laughs> yeah. I, I was laughing so hard when I watched that and I, I, I geeked out the most watching that trailer because I'm such an Evil Dead fan yeah yep. I mean that that's you know in terms of like yeah but you don't see as much TV stuff like there's some TV footage they bring in there yeah. and again like those are one of those things with like the, the smaller panels mm-hmm. that you'd really love to see yep uh, because you really have to see that everyone's involved who's working with it yeah um, and even like stuff like uh, like the Star Wars Rebel series that would have been awesome to see some of that panel yeah um, yeah just I guess more than anything like uh, yeah the TV stuff would be incredible to see mm-hmm. I definitely would have been there for the Sherlock panel yeah for the Sherlock panel <laughs> um I don't know if there was a Supergirl one. Yeah, there was. There was one? Yep. Oh, I have a lot to see that. Yep, there was. I'm, I'm looking forward to that show. I think that's going to be fun. I am so stoked about that film. Yeah. Uh, that, that show. Because just, you know, being able to do like a fun superhero series like that, mm-hmm. which is the way you should do Super, Supergirl. Yeah, oh, well, that's what Flash is doing. Yeah. I mean, it, it has it has some some dramatic tones, but it's it's mm-hmm. overall fun. I mean, it's... Definitely, in my opinion, above Arrow. Arrow's a little too angsty for me. Yeah, Arrow's a <laughs> slog to get to. Like, he was like, oh, it's great. Yeah, it, it does get great after you slog through 20 episodes. Yeah, it's, that first better. season is rough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I, I, I loved Flash, and I, I got that feel from the Supergirl trailer, so I was like, okay, I'm definitely in. Yeah. I mean, the only other thing that I think that you need to watch on TV this fall is uh, The Muppets. I okay, so I had I had not even heard that they were going to do that show until mm-hmm. I was waiting in the theater to watch Ant Man last night, and they had they had a trailer for it, like even just in the commercial part, like yeah. before the, b- before the actual trailer start, and I was sitting there and I had no idea that they were making this, and I laughed so hard just at that trailer, Enough. like the fact that they're going for this modern family office style filmmaking, but with the Muppets, it's genius. Yeah. And mock it too. Yeah, and completely mock it the whole way through. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna force people to watch that show so it gets ratings, so they'll keep making it because. Oh, I don't think it'll have any question because you're yeah. already gonna have like like kids turning into primetime just to see this. Right. And, and it's uh, on ABC, so it's on ABC, and like, yep. and adults are gonna love the heck out of this show just because yeah. it's Muppets nostalgia. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's about the best thing you could do. Yeah, that, that's you know, there, there's certain stuff that I think works better on television. Mm-hmm. And I think the Muppets is definitely one of those cases at this point. Yeah, the the reboot movie worked. I really enjoyed that, but sure. the the second one was a little hard to watch. See, I liked it if if it were in the context of like a TV series. Yeah, because on like a TV series level, it, it was really funny for what they were trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's just because like you know they're bringing like the whole like celebrity cameo thing, and I think they were doing it that better. Than just saying like, oh, remember when we did the Muppet Show? Yeah. Like, now let's actually do the Muppet Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, just certain movies will work better like that in series. Like I personally think at this point they should just do a Star Trek series. I totally agree. That's the yep. only way I think like this series can go at this point. That'd be awesome. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, and look at look at Daredevil. I mean that 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 movie. Yep. I mean, 
granted, I enjoyed that movie when I first saw it, but I was like probably like 14 <laughs> 15 well it's like it, well, back then it was kind of like okay this is all we're getting yeah so. like well Spider-Man did well let's do Daredevil but I mean that show th- that that character just works so well as like a serialized format right so and to, yeah that show just really worked and I mean now they're announcing uh John Bernthal Shane <laughs> as right. Punisher yeah. I was like oh okay awesome <laughs> yeah I think that's gonna work, and I, and I, I'm looking forward to, to the Jessica Jones TV series. Oh yeah, that'll that'll be interesting. Yeah, I mean, at this point, Marvel's got so many like irons in the fire at this point. Like you know, you can't even count them. Yeah, you, and you know, a, a small part of me is kind of, kind of waiting for it for the ball to drop a little bit for them to be like, oh crap! But it, they they, yeah. they just keep knocking it out. Uh, it's, it's 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 actually impressive. Yeah. Because I mean, ten years ago, if you would have told someone, "All right, well, there's going to be, there's going to be this company that's going to, it's going to make one film, and then they're going to make four, four more films that are going to kind of connect with that first film, and then they're going to bring them all together into one, and then span that out into TV series and do more films. I mean, that's just it's unheard of, ridiculous, yeah. but it worked. And yeah, I mean, that that was kind of like a, a gamble because you know if it didn't work you know that, yeah. that was kind of the end of it yeah and now every movie studio is trying to completely copy that <laughs> like with Universal mm-hmm. trying to I know I know they're talking about doing a universe with all of their monster characters yep <laughs> and uh, Sony's trying to do it with the new Ghostbusters they want to make at least a few films and have them come together and, yeah yeah well the, the franchise like revival thing like is huge at this point with like with Jurassic World yeah um, because they realize, you know, if you can, if you can capitalize on nostalgia and get the kids interested right away, mm-hmm. then it's a surefire hit. Yeah. Well, and I, I find it funny that you know the movie itself was making fun of the fact that dinosaurs were were old and there's not enough wow factor, but yet yep. you know that movie comes and comes out and just fastest to a billion dollars in the box office and <laughs> I guess that's that, funny that, that's kind of the thing that plays on the nostalgia of that because mm-hmm. uh, you know Jurassic Park ruled the 90s yeah oh uh, yeah that that was you know the big thing and it's saying like oh, can it still do it it's like well yeah you get Jurassic Park in there if you do it right and make it fun yeah yeah even even when it gave us two very subpar sequels it, it still had that draw yeah you know I mean, yeah, yeah. People still like. I mean, a lot of people are like torn about which one is better after that point. But yeah, you know, there, there's there was still interest, mm-hmm. and I think it's mainly because there are so many uh, Jurassic Park clones at the time that huh. you're just yeah. kind of like, okay, why don't we just you know get someone who can actually do Jurassic Park rather yep. than just do Theodore Rex or something. So. <laughs> oh, Theodore Rex! <laughs> wow, that's a deep pull. <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to think of other like crappy dinosaur movies at the time, but that's. Yeah, that's I don't know why that the, one comes the, up the lowest of the low. I'm impressed that that one popped up. Wow, that that was with Whoopi Goldberg, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was making sure I was remembering the correct movie. But yeah, and even even Jurassic World, that's that's sparking um, studios to pull movies out of development hell, like uh, uh, Eli Roth's Meg. Yeah, his big giant shark movie, Megalodon movie. That's that's been in production for a long time. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it just got greenlit to be to be made because of just the draw. Yeah. Which is interesting. I wonder if it I wonder if like I don't want to suggest that it might have happened, I wonder if like Sharknado has something to do with Well because like Could've. Sharknado I think kind of revived this inter- the semi interest in having, you know, these monster movies. Yeah. So possibly. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and people liked the I guess the schlock factor of it. I mean Yeah. They did a third one, right? Are they doing a third one? Uh, they are doing it. If not, if they're not already, that's it's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be happening. Yeah, yeah, because that's like the most the most viewership sci-fi has seen in <laughs> oh yeah years. Well, it, they always kind of have like some gimmick to get them in there. Like a, there's some like one of those like shark versus megalodon type films where they they mention like some big actor they got to come in. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always a big draw. I like the shark to puss movies. The shark, the shark to puss movies are pretty neat. <laughs> Specifically, just or, uh, I think it was, I think it, no, I think it was Megalodon, one, the one where the shark attacks the plane. Yeah, I think that was Megalodon. Yeah, 
Yeah. That, that one just like it, it gets you right from there. It's like, oh god, he's going to the shark. Gets invited to play. <laughs> Works for them though. <laughs> but I guess you know the the, the kids dig it because I was in a, a elevator going to the theater and there's a kid in there who said he was. He, this kid was like about like ten years old. And he said he was going to see Jurassic World for the second time. Oh wow! And he was telling me all about how like you know oh the 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 T Rex and the Raptors they gang up on the the hybrid dinosaur and like yeah you're awesome kid. <laughs> it's, that's awesome though that there that there there still is that draw and that kind of well yeah cause that it, awe because well, we saw it with kids too and okay uh, yeah. And you know, like a lot of people were like, "Oh, is it you know, is it gonna be too violent for kids? You know, are kids gonna be scared by it?" The kids were laughing along with us. Yeah, they were cheering. We were. Yeah, because <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Like, it, it is incredibly violent, but it's violent to the point where you know, it's kind of like adventurous violent. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like yeah, like you know, the raptor goes and attacks someone, and then like, oh, some blood sprays off to the side. Yeah, but you know, that's kind of how you know kids like dig adventure, like having played like that. You know, you showed. You show death, but you don't show, like, the gory bits. Yeah. Like, you know, most kids can handle that. Yeah, you imply it as much as you can, and, yeah. Yeah, I mean, kids like being scared like that. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Well, I did. That's why I love horror so much. It was at a very young age. (laughs) (laughs) That's the thing, you know, weird weird stuff will scare kids that you Mm -hmm. don't expect, because... Honestly, when, when I was 10, like, I had seen the Friday the 13th films, and didn't scare me a bit, but Worf on Star Trek... Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> scare the crap out of yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. Because like, it, there's a Klingon on the bridge. And you let him walk around with a knife. <laughs> I don't want. No one's concerned about this. <laughs> I think Data scared me too. Because like, you just yeah, let Data kind of spooked robot me. Robot walk around. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, you know, the, the, the stuff that you think kids scare kids, you know, it doesn't scare them as much as they think. Yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> I guess what's implied to them. Right, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I'm trying to think. Well, yeah. Okay, so how did you how did how did you feel about the Suicide Squad trailer? Uh, I'm I'm digging it. It's okay. it, it's gonna be like what DC's appeal is right now is they're going to be the alternative. Yep. For uh, for making different superhero films. Really gritty. Like that was the yeah. main thing I got from that trailer. With especially like Suicide Squad, because I'm really getting this kind of. Um, dark like almost like 80s version of like dirty dozen going yep, on absolutely which is which is the same tone like they they did for assault on arkham mm-hmm. oh uh, yeah which i mean that that film is like the, the temp if if it isn't it should be the template for the suicide squad movie yeah because that's how you do it how you do it dark and gritty and tongue-in-cheek yeah you just uh, make it work which is exactly how you do it i mean you don't want to play it up too seriously like that yeah absolutely which I get the feeling from that trailer they're going to go for that angle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it, it seems like it. And, I mean, the from what we saw, I mean, the performances seemed pretty strong. Like, even Will Smith seemed like he, was, he wasn't he was trying to ham it up at all. It was just... No. Yeah. And I mean, that, that's... Like, I mean, yeah, Will, Will Smith at this point realizes, you know, what he has to do to make stuff work as an actor. Like, he's trying to take it a little more... He, you know, he's, he's he, not... He just needs to not work with his son. He's... he's <laughs> That's all it is. I was gonna say he's not rapping anymore, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, th- I I would be fine with that. You know, I kind of miss the '90s when he would release a movie and then release a multi-million-dollar selling single that would go along with the film. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I guess like he's, I guess they, I should say like he's, he's like far from like the Fresh Prince days when he yeah, was absolutely. when he was exploding. Yeah, yeah, I, I I do like summertime. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> I liked Focus actually. Did you see that with him? You know, I was surprised I at, at how well it worked. Yeah, because I mean, it's, it's you know, its its structure is flawed, but for its direction and the the chemistry between her and Margot Robbie, yeah, works incredibly well. Which you wonder how much of that's going to carry over to Suicide Squad. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Because I was like, oh, because I know I know the the Cause history between thing, Harley yeah. and Deadshot. So, and then Jared Leto, I thought. He, I mean, the, the few seconds we saw him in the trailer, I was like, "Oh, okay, they're going this way. Yeah, <laughs> they're just gonna make him nuts, <laughs> which is gonna totally work." Yeah, which is which is great because I mean, at this point, you have to do it with the Joker. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna bring the Joker in there, you can't just sort of you know base it off of something else that's yeah. already been done. Like you have to make him stand out. Well, yeah, and it absolutely, and it's completely different from Nicholson's take, and it's completely different from Heath Ledger's take. So. Yeah, 
Well, from what we've seen, like you know. Well, someone I, I forgot who said someone mentioned that kind of like uh, Nicholson was kind of more like the gangster Joker, mm-hmm. and how Heath Ledger was more like the anarchist Joker. Right. And this one we're getting is like the the, the big psychopath Joker. You yes. Know, like the the more twisted one you're reading about in the comics. Yeah, I was gonna say which tends to be the one that fans mainly like in the comics is the psychopathic version of the Joker. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. I was I was really on the fence when they announced it, and then after seeing the trailer, I was like, okay, I could... Well, everyone is always on the fence whenever there's a new Joker. I mean, right. when when even when like the first photos of like Heath Ledger came out, everyone was very oh. niffy. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> if you look at that first photo, like it doesn't show you much of him at all. No. And it and honestly, you look at it, it kind of looks like, like Gacy. It did. Angle. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely it did, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean... A lot of people are going to be hesitant at first, but you know, it's you know, wait and see how they do it, and mm-hmm. you know, hopefully they'll do it right. Yeah. One thing's true though: David Ayers is good at making movies about bottles. So. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's he's good at making these villain pictures. Like, yeah. uh, honestly, I can't think of anyone who'd be better suited for making a Suicide Squad movie. At this point. Yeah, well, especially after seeing Fury. I mean, there was, <laughs> there yeah. there really wasn't a truly likable character in that movie. No. <laughs> which is, which, I mean, that that's the thing I think what Ayers does best is like making these villains that you want to follow. Mm-hmm. Because uh, like, because before that, like the same year he made Sabotage, which is the exact same thing. I still haven't seen that. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's not a great film, but it's interesting to see the angle of just having these like crooked DEA agents. Oh, okay. Um, who just go like off the rails and like, and Arnold Schwarzenegger is, not, he's not quite like the the triumphant hero come say they. He's kind of like the lesser hero. Okay. He's kind of like the lone Suicide Squad. In this oh, okay, movie. gotcha. Yep. And what was the other one? end of Watch? I really liked. Oh, End of Watch is incredible. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, that was really good. I mean, that's that's the thing. I think at this point, Ayers is probably the best for doing like movies about very flawed characters. Yeah. Well, and it was I thought I thought it was I thought he was a great choice as opposed to you know just having Zack Snyder do everything. Right, <laughs> which is that's that's a big risk. I know a lot of these franchises they want to have like one director behind these tent poles. Yeah, they want to have like the the, the puppet master. <laughs> yeah, they, they they want him to be their Whedon. Yeah, well, point. right, yeah. yeah. But when when they announced that that Affleck was not only going to star but direct and co-write the next Batman film, I was, I was okay. I mean, because yeah. he's he's really shown his chops as a director and writer. He's an insanely good director. Oh, fantastic! Now. Yeah, Argo was excellent. Yeah. Yep. I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm surprised like how much he can you know direct and like star in his own films mm-hmm. and still make them work. Yeah, absolutely. So him doing a Batman film feels way too fitting at this yeah. point. <laughs> well, because I remember when when they first were talking about like trying to coax him into the. DC movie world, they were they were talking about having him do the Justice League movie. Sure. Yeah, and then then they announced it was going to be Snyder again, and I was like, oh okay. Right. <laughs> I'm hoping it's just like a temp thing. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> like it's one of those things like like oh yeah, we're just going to do all the Avengers films like. Right. Nah. Now nah, let's end it over to some better directors. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, yeah, because we're getting for for Infinity War, it's going to be the Russo brothers. Yeah. That did Winter Soldier. Yeah. Kevin. Pressed with Captain America, and hopefully with Civil War. So yeah. I think yeah, the best choice you could do for it. Yeah, absolutely. Which I mean, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll see what happens with, like Civil War because that's really going to be the test of like seeing yes. Because Civil War, I think, is end up going to be like like Days of Future Past, where it's just going to be so much thrown at the screen, <laughs> right? That it's either going to be one of the best Marvel films or the worst. Yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of sad, but that probably will be. I mean, just because be deciding point. Because all the news you hear about it, like everything they want to build up through, it's like, man, this all better come together. <laughs> yeah, because was it? yeah. Okay, so that's next summer. That's that's May sixth when that's released. Yep. So wow, that's gonna be a tall order. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and then Doctor Strange is after that in November. So we'll yeah we're gonna get yeah we're gonna get two Marvel movies a year for a while here, and hopefully. Like I, I'm, I'm glad that they're gonna stick with like Doctor Strange, just like not making that an origin film. Yeah. Like you know, as much as I love like Ant Man as an origin, I'd really like to see a superhero film like just like pick up mm-hmm. right in the middle. Yeah. Um, j- just like just to get things moving, because like a lot of times like origin films will be all right. 
Yeah. But then you get to the sequel, and then they really know how to nail the character. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hoping they can do that with Doctor Strange by just skipping the note there. Yeah, just drop you right in. He's already yeah. been established. And just, just deliver the best Doctor Strange movie you can. Yeah. Which, I hope Scott Derrickson will do that. I mean, he's... You know, I like him as a director. I mean, yeah. I've... Oh, we'll see. He's ha, Has he only done Sinister and Deliver Us from Evil? Were those just the two? Uh, he's done... I think he's done some other ones. I think he did The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Yes. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yep, he did do that one. He's yeah. Mainly, yeah, he's mainly done these like these these great little horror films, horror so films, it's, yeah. it's kind of hard to gauge yeah. what he'll do. But, I mean, if anything, we've been proving that a lot of directors who have worked on smaller films can do the big ones. Yeah. Like, I mean, you look at, uh, like, Gareth Edwards. Mm -hmm. I mean, he only has two films on his resume right now. Uh, Monsters, which is a very, very low-budget sci-fi action film. Indie sci-fi film, yep. And then up to Godzilla. Godzilla, yeah. He (laughs) has a a huge budget. (laughs) Or, um, what's his name? Uh, Colin Tevereau, the guy that did Jurassic World. His movie before that was Safety Not Guaranteed. Yeah. Which was a fun little indie time travel comedy, but... And that's that's another great thing that ties in with with Tomorrowland. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, like, because you've heard the story of how Trevorrow got to Jurassic World, right? No. Uh, Apparently, um... He was going to work with Brad Bird um, on uh, on Star Wars. Okay. When they were still working on it. And so when they were working on Star Wars, you know, nothing really came of it. They say, like, oh, this, this guy is really good. Um, I'm going to recommend him to some friends of mine. And so, like, I forget who it was, but there were some other people introduced him to, and they saw his work with um, Safety Not Guaranteed. Mm-hmm. And they showed up to Spielberg. And they said, like, like, dude, you got to sit down with this guy. And so he sat down with Spielberg, and eventually they talked him into directing Jurassic World. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That's one good thing that came out of Tomorrowland. Yeah, right? So you're saying, like, oh, I'm working on Tomorrowland, but, you know, we'll introduce these guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is well, that is good to hear that, you know, these, these really good indie directors are, you know, mm-hmm. getting noticed and moving forward with bigger things, but... Which is why I can't wait to see what a lot of these indie horror directors come up with right. once they start like hitting it huge yeah. with all these films. Like The guys who did Starry Eyes mm-hmm. did it through a Kickstarter. Oh, really? That's how amazing that film is. Because like, they, they just did Kickstarter to raise the funds, Yeah. and the film came out, and everyone is talking about this film. Yeah. So, yeah, that's you're seeing like these, these people like rise up like straight from the ranks. Wow. And that's... That's still streaming on Netflix, right? Uh, yes, it's right. still streaming on Netflix. Right, I have to check that out. And I was really impressed because I, you know, th- that film got a pretty good release. Um, I like I saw a copy of it at, at Target. I was like, wow. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I was really impressed. Like I went to Target, I was like, holy oh, crap, Star Wars! <laughs> Excuse me, these guys have made it. Yeah, they're got to be getting close. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm trying to think. There was another. Oh, uh, Drew Goddard. That was the other director I was I was mm. thinking of I mean he, did, he didn't necessarily do indie stuff because he started off in Whedon's TV regime yeah and then did Cabin in the Woods and mm. went to Daredevil yeah did the first few episodes of that and I think he's he's working on a movie I think I think so I remember but, hearing that he was working on something new yeah I can't remember what it was though but yeah and he's, he's he's a really he's, he's a really talented writer and director because I, I I loved Captain in the Woods. I thought that was just great. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the reason. Yeah, because he just has, yeah, I think he, he's, he's, he's writing a lot. Yeah, he's fairly there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's he's, per- he's still connected to the Sinister Six, six movie. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. Yeah. Well, if it does, it'll be heavy rewrites. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Considering what they were planning on doing with that third Amazing Spider-Man, apparently they were going to have people brought back from the dead like That's there was going to be yeah. yeah some form of resurrection that was yeah that news dropped this week and everyone's yeah. like okay no <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do some stupid stuff or we're going to bring back <laughs> yeah I'd rather go back to a teenage Peter Parker but apparently they're not going to tell the origin story again or are they I keep hearing different things I really hope not I'm hopefully I'm hopeful that they won't because we've already had two origins at this point. Yeah, and it feels like we've had five. Yeah. It feels like I've seen that origin so many times. And it gets to a point where, like, you don't need one. Because, like, even when we had, like, the first, like, 89 Batman film, we didn't have, like, much of an origin for that one. No, it was really subtle. 
Yeah. Which is what worked. So, like, I think, yeah, though they might mention it, mm -hmm. but I get the feeling they really want to rush into doing a good Spider-Man film. Yeah. Because, like, because we've, we've gotten so many, and a lot of them are rushed. Yeah. So. Well, and they just need to realize that he, he does have a really great rogues gallery of villains, and you just don't, you don't need to, mm -hmm. you don't need to necessarily please the fans that much because I felt like yeah. that's that's what happened with with Raimi's Spider-Man franchise and it kind of felt like it with uh, with with the second Amazing Spider-Man too like oh, well yeah. we have Gwen Stacy so we're gonna have to kill her right we should probably kill her at the end well, of the well it movie. was yeah because at that point it was completely just like a cavalcade of villains mm -hmm. it was just like, like oh let's just throw the rhino in what yeah. does he do oh, nothing we're throwing the rhino we're gonna throw yeah absolutely nothing and you you waste Paul Giamatti which yeah because <laughs> I was actually really digging on the Rhino. Mm -hmm. I, you know, if the whole film were about him, I would have loved that film. Yeah, so much because he embodies like the the ridiculousness and the fun of of Spider Man. Yeah, and that would like he sh the fact that they only use him as like bookends. Yeah, he should have been like a key player. Like he, like I would have loved the film a lot more if he were like an in between mm -hmm. between all these villains. Yeah, and then we get Jamie Foxx's Electro, who starts off like. Jim Carrey's character in Batman Forever. Like, oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was like, wait a minute. Okay, all right. And yeah, just and then just rushing the Goblin and rushing Harry Osborn and yeah, it was just a lot. I guess we didn't learn anything from Spider-Man Three. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> I like you, old Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, what? Uh, I guess why don't we end with like a you have like a recommendation? Have you um, film someone check out? Recommendation, yeah, I've got my list here. Hold on, let me check my list. You do yours first. I gotta look up my list here. Okay, um, I'm gonna say like for something that's new out on DVD right now, I would say probably Ex Machina. Ooh. I, I think that is one of those like great sci-fi little sci-fi films that rose up from theaters. Everyone took note of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's the best sci-fi film I've seen this year. Yeah, like before I saw the um, Inside Out and. Furious Seven. I was gonna say it was the best of the year. So. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. See. Well. See. And I, I've I've been hearing that. I still need to see it. I was. I, I almost bought it the other day when I bought it at Follows, but I purchased it Follows first. So, mm -hmm. that'll be my next purchase for sure. Because I've heard nothing but great things about that movie. Oh yeah. It's. It, I would not be surprised if, you know, unless there's like a cavalcade of like great films this fall up for Oscars, mm -hmm. it might have a shot. Yeah. What do you think the the chances uh, for uh, Mad Max are when it comes to the to the Oscar race? Uh, I mean, probably not Best Picture, but I'm just saying, no. like, just probably, you know, you know, like I can only say like the the for sure is like visual effects. Mm. It'll get nominated. It would be nice. I I think it would be nice to see it get nominated for soundtrack. Yep. Um, I would love to see an editing Oscar for that. Editing probably probably for costuming. I oh, would hope yeah. so. Yeah. Just because of the design and everything. Mm -hmm. And production design. Definitely for editing. Yeah. Definitely the for editing. editing would be nominated. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, probably won't get any actor nominations. Like, Best Picture is a tough sell. Yeah. I mean, unless there's, like, there's nothing this fall yeah. that, that competes. Well, I know, I know uh, uh, James, James Gunn is a, is a voter now. Right. Yeah. yeah that's the thing. <laughs> so, so he can sway enough people. It could be. <laughs> so I, yep. so so we're gonna get Ant Man. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah. Okay. So for for uh, my choice, it is a, a short film on YouTube. I'm sure you've seen it. A lot of people are talking about this right now. Is Kung Fury. Yeah. Oh my God! I was completely blown away by that. Like it was just such a. Just a punch in the, no, sorry. It was it was a it was a roundhouse kick to the face of '80s nostalgia, and it, the fact that it was it was a crowdfunded project. It was yeah. was it Sweden that it was made in? Was you know, I'm, Sweden? I'm gonna say Sweden just yeah. it seems like something they do. So. Yeah, it's yeah, but it, it was absolutely hilarious. If you're a fan of '80s action movies, '80s video games, like it, it just hits every note. I I could not stop laughing. Well, that trailer blew everyone away. Oh, the trailer was amazing, and then I was like, okay, well, I don't know how they're going to be able to carry this on for a movie, but that, those 30 minutes go by really fast, and it was just, yeah, I absolutely loved it. I could not stop laughing. I've watched it several times since. But <laughs> Yeah, if, if you have, like, an, an affinity for that stuff, it can work. Um, like, 
and I mean, you're seeing a lot of these directors who know how to do that, mm-hmm. who can capitalize on like the goofy stuff, but still make it work. Yeah. Um, like one series that I always recommend to people is Danger Five. Oh yeah. Because uh, like because yeah they're, they're making like jokes about like like sixty spy movies and eighties action movies, mm-hmm. but they they take the time to look at all like the technicalities of it. Like, yeah. You know w- what made them you know so bad they were fun. Yeah, and I I had no knowledge of that show until it dropped dropped on Netflix, and I was like, Teacher Five, that looks kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. you wonder because you see the picture of like Hitler on there with a gun, and you're <laughs> right? Like, yeah, what's going on? I know. When I looked at that, I was like, Is that? Yeah, that's Hitler. Okay, all right. <laughs> Those guys are great. They, they were the guys who made the uh, Italian Spider Man trailer. Oh, right. Yeah, and from what I understand, like. Uh, like a TV station in Australia said, like, we want to do a project with you, and they gave him, like, three pitches. <laughs> and the third one they wrote was Danger it's 5, Danger and they wrote it as... They wrote it as kind of like a suicide one, thinking there's no way they'll pick this. Right. And <laughs> they ended up going with it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, and, and Kung Fury is streaming on YouTube. You can watch it for free in oh, yeah, yeah. 30 minutes. It's, it's Which awesome. is strange, because I see people boot like it. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> How much effort did that take? <laughs> yeah, I'm not giving them the ad revenue. I'm going to download it. <laughs> what a download. Oh, wow. That, that's shocking that people would bootleg it. All right. Well, yeah, that's whatever. all lazy there. Yeah. <laughs> that's just lazy. <laughs> all right. So it's been Video Store Veterans. Yes. With, uh, Mark. Keegan. All right. See you later. <laughs>